All right, I believe we may indeed be live. And as you can see, we've got a bit of a problem. We've got a bit of a problem. So, hello everyone, and welcome back to some more. And Benar as Hul as Krakazol, the Beer Dwarves. And things are about to be real, real bad. Real bad. Uh, it'd be nice if I saved up a little bit more money, but I didn't. That's... It is what it is. I still have quite a lot of loans as well, which is unfortunate. And we have the Serpent's Rot. The disease which has been ravaging the Dwarva continues to take victims as it slowly rots away our people. Casualties skyrocket and we're hard-pressed to care for the sick, not to mention dispose of the piles of corpses we found ourselves burdened with. So Huda's crackers all get Serpent's Rot Outbreak. Giving me unrest, dev cost malice, guts produced goes up, which I don't know why, but sure. Uh, all power cost plus 7.5%. So is there anything I want to do? Thankfully, we've already taken techs and such. I don't think there's anything I want to do. The cores have already started. What we need to do is actually research our That we, we need we need to click that button real, real quick. Just, just do that. Uh, as the artifacts in our state are directly controlled by us, there'll be no squabbling between the philosophers of brilliance, technothaumaturgy, and mechanism when it comes to artificery for the benefit of the state. In our country, they work as one. Our state artifices can be directed to research the fields of society and trade, creating inventions for the common individual to use or pushing our economic capabilities, industry and state, creating innovations that allow us to industrialize or modernize our state, warfare and armaments, creating inventions of the field of battle from deadly war machines or new weapons for our soldiers. We're still... Warfare, obviously. Um, and so that's Artificer Doodad gonna do that. Um, yeah, we've got we've got um, thirteen extra capacity. So researching actually doesn't take capacity anymore, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, that I did that because it's thirty of each, and I didn't want to spend the extra and. Um, yeah. Maybe I should pull up. I should have pulled up. Uh, how to deal with serpents. Rot. Um, cause I'm sh I know there is a graph. On the best path to, to choose. Is that this one? No. I, I saw Amanda use it uh, when she was playing as the dwarves. She streamed herself using it. Now, I should have looked before I started the stream. I don't know if anyone can, can find me that. Um, hmm. I guess I don't know. I guess I don't know. We're just going to have to wing it. But if anyone, if anyone does find out, uh, they could totally, um, throw me a bone and, and, and show me, show me what I need to do. Uh, God lost. What is God lost? Seventy. Th oh, that that's these guys, isn't it? Yeah, it's a it's a goblin religion. Okay, so serpents rot time, and uh, we'll have to suffer through this nightmare. Serpents rot continues to spread. Mass graves filled each and every day, and our people have begun to panic, begging for our government to act. We must focus on the sick. Uh, the frigid expanse above the Tree of Stone offers a new view into the warm valleys, deserts, and jungles of Rahan. Um, I've read this literally yesterday. I'm, I'm not reading it again. Uh, but yeah, we, we go when we find a yeti because we are Slayer King. A death but not mine. My, my, we, we're going to continue. We're going to keep seeking death until we die. Slaying, that's what we, the Amethyst Dwarves, do. 
Uh, we'll try and find another Yeti. I'm sure there'll be more text when I find more things to go and slay, but right now we only have the Yeti available. Uh, do I die? 21% chance? No. Yes? Did I die? No, I'm still alive. As the country rapidly descends into chaos due to the Serpent's Rock, we must act quickly in order to move forward. Do I burn or look for clues in the corpses? I think... I think we burn? Do we burn? I don't know if we burn or not. Um, I don't know. Fuck it, we'll burn them. It's green. It's green. That means it's better, right? We'll just burn the corpses. It's, f it's fine, probably. Uh, ooh, we can just plunder these temples as well. Precursor relics get... Uh, produced is actually freaking amazing. Precursor relics are dope as hell. We just need the money to actually build it. Uh, we'll search for the Yeti again. We're not going to read it again. But we just keep searching for the Yeti until we die. That's the basic plan. Twenty-one percent chance. And my quest continues, and I lost another stability. That sucks hard. But we have done a mission. Ye lads need a drink. Unlike our own hold, Ovdel Kanzad managed to withstand the long fall of Aldwarov, surviving the goblin assaults with their impressive artillery barrages. There's a shell of their former shelves. Shell of their former shelves, um, a decayed remnant of better times. They would be better off if we take them under our wing. They could use the protection, maybe a good drink. Nice. And a game claims on Ambermine Alley and doesn't Earthsea, but that's just that's this. So I've already done it. The goblins of the Tree of Stone have been soundly defeated, and what remains of them is cowering in the caves. There's no challenge or joy in killing them, but they keep raiding our supply lines and seem resolute in remaining an annoyance. For the sake of our realm, we'll have to root them out. Nice. Hey, stability. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I needed it. Alright, so a strong seed. I need a grand mage's influence. Uh, Earth seed needs to have a mage tower and a courthouse. You need... Cavernous hold in Kanzad workshop state house, two manufactories, two levels of expanded infrastructure, and scornfully insult a monstrous nation that has a province in Halles while drunk. Are we still drunk? I don't believe so. No. No, we're not. I mean, it's, I need to die at some point. I'd rather not keep losing stability from it, though. And this rot is just going to spread. Where is it now? Wait, where's the Serpent's Rock gone? Where's the Serpent's Rock? Oh boy! It's spreading this way. I could have sworn it was in my capital. But alas, it isn't. So Serpent's Raw is giving me mega problems. Goods produced modifier minus 80% is criminal. Um, monthly devastation as well. Not fun. Um, Edict of Absolutism actually wouldn't be a terrible thing to have. But yeah, it will spread to me soon enough. Alright, please die. I'm losing stab every time. How, how many yetis am I going to fucking kill?
Okay, we need to we need to stop doing that. I'm going to spend money on drinking myself to death. Oh, extensive research against it as well. Yeah, I need I need to do that for sure. Let's establish a team of researchers in order to properly fight the serpent's rot. And Volcomol will do that. Um Go Digger's Delight and we just chug I mean I gotta I gotta spend the money. Until I die. Do it did I did I do it? Did I die? No. I mean in two months I'm going to be losing three stab. This is this is insane. How can my guy not die? How can my guy not die? Only 15% chance of death. Son of a bitch! And the Volcomol didn't work either. I'm at minus three stab, and I failed to die gloriously. So now we have a new ruler. That, that's fucking annoying. That's so annoying. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And we're gonna have internal conflicts. The high keg lords of Holders Crackers all have felled many great beasts since the hold has been reclaimed and restored. Knowledge of these achievements of bravery and valor have quickly spread and ignited fire within others. The call to slay, the urge to kill and prove one's strength against the horrendous beasts this world has to offer, or die in the valiant effort, their death immortalized in the annals and tavern songs of dwarves of Holders Crackers all. These battle-hardened slayers have banded together now, seeking out ever greater foes to fight. They have now come to offer their service to those who have inspired them in the first place. The High Keg Lords. Okay. Sure. Bavari versus Gulen. Interesting. Gulen is fucking huge. I mean, as long as they don't take mines, I don't really give a shit. They can take all this. Uh, I can't really afford to lose money right now. Or, no, sorry, I can't afford to lose admin. Because I've got no stability. Because game is just kicking me in the dick. Upgrade the Dwarvar Rail. Start the construction of railway works in every applicable province for 30 per province. That's going to put me into debt, surely. Ah, fuck it, what's new? Actually, didn't. Didn't actually cost me that much. Three grand to finance extensive research. I mean, I kind of should do that. Finance that extensive research to get rid of this thing. Now our team of research isn't established. We need greater finance their research. Without sufficient funds, they simply won't be able to find a cure. We'll find a cure, please. We're back up to ten grand of loans. Let's go. That's fantastic. I've I had in a row with no breaks. I've had the um, Horde Curse, and then we had uh, the uh, Under Empire. Fuck me. Um, the Obsidian Legion. And now we've got um, the Serpent's Rot. And it's all happened within such a short period of time. 
Having a Spam Master in our employees mainly contributed to our intelligence gathering abroad, but Spam Master Bombgaz Doomhammer sometimes coordinates counter-espionage as well. Recently, his investigations have uncovered a conspiracy that could not or could only be the work of one of our neighbouring countries. Which neighbours behind it remains unclear, but the constant exchanges of information would require those behind it to be close by. Doomhammer has prepared a roundup of harshly questioned a number of foreign officials who might be involved, but conflicting theories about the culprits leaves it up to the High Keg Lord to decide who to target. Uh, the command of Reichenhaga. Fuck Reichenhaga. Fight it with fire? Sounds good. God, that costs so much money as well to go for, um, to go for, that's wild. So yeah, this is a, oh my god, I'm losing money now. What's, what do we got going on? The, the Serpent's Rot is reaching its tree of stone. Kanzad's falling. Well, each house has had to undergo a complete inspection to identify each patient in advance. Our soldiers made a curious discovery. Homes consuming a certain type of fungi seem less affected than others. This information may prove vital. to make states yet. I will be making it a state, but right now it's probably a bad idea. Because I just don't have the, um, uh, the spare monarch points. Because I need to... Fuck me. Shameful Ruler sucks. Serpent's Rot there sucks. We're just going to basically have to eat the, um, the pain. Our actions do not seem to have been in vain, and the spread of this terrible evil seems to have slowed down. Should we continue this path, or use more experimental means? Try and spread incandescent powder through the ventilation system. Sure, try it out. Give me more, give me more loans, baby. Building on the work of our ancestors, the next brick of the new era of transport of goods and men across our nation has just been laid. Let's go. Upgraded rails. You love to see it. There, you've got advanced Dwarova rail. Gives me 75% movement speed, which is dope. Supply limit plus two, which is surprisingly way more impactful than just a plus two would have you believe. Institution spread is great. Governing car. Oh, like, it's it's all really good shit. 20% dev cost? Fuck yeah. Self-petition is representing the common people, despite the monumental resource we've already committed, demand that more effort be used in fighting the Serpent's Rot. Though we've made it clear how much has already been put in place, they're adamant that more must be done. I mean, fuck me, you're not wrong, but like... We're, we're doing it all already. Got trick. Go and deal with it. You go and deal with that. Among some of our blah internal conflicts. Oh, fuck me. That sucks. Forgot internal conflicts was a thing. 
Welp. Beginning in 1666, Hullo's crackers all face almost a decade of utter chaos, slowly consuming the country from within and bringing it to the verge of collapse. Our nation is struggling both socially and economically as famine and war plague our lands. More like just the plague plagues our lands. And growing opposition against aristocracy and church has resulted in a series of rebellions and assassination attempts against the monarch. F. Mostly it's because I failed to kill myself through drink and yetis. Damn good ruler. What initially seems like a great idea has just turned into a nightmare. A single spark was all it took for the power to catch a light and throughout the hole the people burn alive. Fuck. That's another two stability that I would have lost. Is it now faster to use the rails? It is now faster to use the rails, except up here. So we need to fix our internal conflicts, fix this fucking serpent's rot. Oh, everything is going bad. You can still fight it with fire a bit. Everything sucks. Everything is sucking. Serpent's Rot has got as far as here now. Oh god, no. Um... I mean, on the one hand, I need to develop, but on the other hand, Serpent's Rot is, like, not something I want to be developing right now. Oh, it's kind of just a waste of points. Okay, so a healthy carrier seems to have appeared. His entire family has succumbed to the disease, but he's the only one to have survived. How shall we proceed? Use him to find a cure and spend more money! You leave our court, um, fine, whatever, I don't care. Escape while you can. I can't afford any of you. A small group of mages and doctors are organizing a medical expedition to Durhal Rock, but we need funding from us to effectively fight the disease. Take it, please. Just... Oh my god, Serpent's Rot, no! It sucks so hard. Look at this shit. I mean, Serpent's Rot is completely, completely ruined uh, Virkal Gulen. It is no wonder that they're being raked by Bavari. I mean, it's no wonder anyway, but they used to be way stronger. Losing 75 gold a month. Uh. The Elay of our nation urges to further fund the research effort and send more and more money to our magicians and researchers working hard to find a cure. How shall we respond? Fuck it, just give them all of the money. I need to get my stability to one. Are you fucking with me? At least wait until Shameful Ruler is gone. In seven months. Human highwaymen, using other nations' instability or its anti human policies as a pretext to run amok have began to attack our people as they go about their business. If these were of, of our own race, it would be so much easier to deal with them. But these humans literally look all the same and are all over the place, making the prospect of hunting them down potentially undesirable. 
said harsher patrols will punish all the humans in the region uh, on an accusation of harboring them. Uh, establish more frequent patrols. That'll work, probably, maybe. Ancient unreadable text. We've seen this before. It's the middle option. Nine peasants rise up. Uh, starvation player can increase effort to control the legal and economic status of the peasants or draining the strength of the common people. Unrest is brewing among the lower classes of society and threatened to worsen the disorder of our already tormented nation. Restrict serfdom. Where are they? They're right here. Go get them. Why they're all r rising up right there is, is kind of funny. Uh, I gain a stability. Let's go. Fucking crack doom roar. Oh my god. F <laughs> so crack and Virgo Gulen are allies and the crack has finally arrived. On the morning of the th dawn of the third day, look to the east, expect my arrival, and all that. Will it be enough? More than likely, no. 163,000, though, and their troops are probably better than the 193 Boove. Uh, local hospital will give them money. I mean, at this point, we need to just kind of ignore the fact that we're going to be in much debt. After examining the body of the healthy carrier without finding anything abnormal at home, he confessed to his consumption in large quantities of a particular mushroom known as pristine fungi. Although this mushroom is renowned as disgusting, it seems to be the only thing that all survivors have in common, having had to consume the mushroom in order to survive after losing their livelihoods to the rot. Uh, fucking collect samples of the fungi. And go further into debt. This is now more expensive than Horde Curse. Like a disgusting amount of expense here. Hey, I'm glad you like the uh, the face cam border. I didn't know how it would go come across. It's a bit weird. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll keep it yet or not, but we'll find out. The Halesi and their lust for knowledge and power have managed to breach the vaults of the enormous precursor temples that dot the landscape. Yo, boys, me too. News is rich of their finds in the form of new and powerful objects on the open markets, coupled with rumors that deep within their temples lay even more potent artifacts. Interesting. Yeah, I already did it though. I mean, I'm doing, I'm literally doing it right now. So did crack just get yeeted out? I feel like they're, they're not here anymore. Bankruptcy looming. Not good. Uh, uh, I don't know if I can avoid bankruptcy here. You can offer whatever feedback you like, yeah, of course. Let's do a sale of titles. Now seize land. If you're bankrupt, you lose the buffs from the Horde Curse, by the way. Fuck, that's right. That's this one, isn't it? Yeah. Fuck. It's really good. They fight. A research found by so the protection of the virus among the infected even seemed to stop it completely in some cases. Big step of what it finds in the definitive cure. Good job, Virgo Golan. Give me, give me whatever you have. I'm. I want to do it too. 
local hospital. I I don't think I need to do that if we found that we've reached the maximum number of loans. Fuck. <laughs> um. We we just need we need to try and hold it off. You demand more funding. 50% chance of losing a stab. Uh, let me first get rid of court and country. Fuck, I can't. Um, shit. Fifty-seven. Where is fifty-seven? Really? Is it really this fucking annoying? To Fuck me. All right. Well, there's forty-nine, and it goes. That's lower, so we're looking at 57 is right there. Okie dokie. I really don't want to go bankrupt. I think I need to extend the loan. I can't repay my loans right now. It's just not happening. Alright, army maintenance back at zero. We're not going to root out corruption right now. How long can we survive? Can we fix the rot before we bankrupt? Holy shit, Bavari. That's uh, quite a lot of money. Sure, you can have soldiers. Give me money. 820, let's go. Uh, based on all the stuff I've seen from other streamers over the years, make it a full square, move the position away from the corner, add some space and it'd be much better. Like this? Is, it, is that better? I don't know if that's better or not. I understand these disasters are the mod's way of stopping the Dwarven Snowball, but geez, the cost, um, they cost a lot, and me and my friend are playing, went 120 grand in debt, with me subsidizing more than 200 ducats. Yeah, this Serpent's Rot is, like, the worst. I've never seen this one be this bad. I'm already max innovativeness, don't need to do that. A remedy for the rot. We researchers have almost succeeded in synthesizing a cure for the serpent's rot, but a crucial ingredient seems missing, and several ingredients show promise. A pristine fungi. We've already real. We've already determined it's the pristine fungi. We've already determined that. Experiment with the graphic depending on the game. Yeah, the, that I, I won't keep it for anything but, um, but EU four. After several months of hard research, one of our most dedicated researchers seemed to have found a way to at least slow the serpent's rot. Unfortunately, the course of his research, he deliberately infected himself with the rot in order to view the results uh, of his work, and though he could slow the disease, he could not halt it. Worse, besides the loss of one of our best minds, he was not able to properly explain his research before his untimely demise. His peers are already trying to decipher his notes. Balls. His sacrifice will probably be in vain. Also, we'll get rid of internal conflicts. Nice, nice, nice. More funding, nope. You can't have any more funding.
Because this doesn't, it, it doesn't say it's going to make it any better. Where's the Ifugo Abyss? Oh, we're literally on it. Go away, greedy grin and command. Okay, is there anything in here? We've only got fight it with fire. I don't know if that's something I want to do right now. Thankfully, the rot has not gotten to my actual capital. But that's not really saying much, is it? I'm capped on dip again. The cheapest to dev is fucking 70. That's criminal. Kill greed again at some point. Put them out there. The misery is an act of charity. Yeah, yeah. You want me? Want you to make a dwarfy frame? Yeah, sure. Hell yeah, that'd be cool. We're trading in Serpent's Bloom. That's because we're putting it into our antidotes. You know, that's not entirely impossible. Maybe it is. Actually, distance between borders, when that goes away, it's going to be actually right there. As soon as I get a, a border with him, I could vassalize him. We're not repaying loans yet. We're in survival mode. Oh, only minus 20 ducats now. We're making money! Let's go! 50 ducats of interest. Um, you know what? Let's repay the 1% loans. Actually, our current loans are probably smaller than this. Shit. I'm not massively far away from getting that one as well. Oh, excuse me. This is this is why I will never play the dwarves in Anbanar multiplayer. It's just not a thing that we can do. Also, the Phoenix Empire, fuck me, holy shit, they are scary. Let's go, Celadora. We simp for a queen. Any more attacks to exploit? That's a good shout. Then we go to the cartels, get some more money. Pay off the three and a half percenters now. So now we're only spending 39 ducats on interest. 16 grand of debt. Oh boy! I mean, you, you're 100% the greatest power in the world, right? Yes, and then Boov second. But yo, we're on the list. We're on that list. It's, the annoying thing is they're in the tunnels, so we're a little bit fucked that way. I'm going to have to attack these guys again before uh, Bian Fang or uh, take it. Oh boy. How 
Harmari mine already grows. Lovely stoof. We like the Harmari here. Can we can we have some kind of thing going on? Railway repairs, sure, whatever. Oh, I'm gonna take another loan. Piss. Not good. Uh, I can't stop that. Fuck. Well, that's irritating. I mean, I'll help you, but I'm I I'm not doing anything here, buddy. I don't want this land. There's nothing yet. Serpent's Rot is plus 7.5% cost, and then Corruption is sucky as well. Get rid of a little bit of inflation. For centuries since their inception, the greatest limiting factor to the use of artillery has been the effort required to reload the cannons. The true destructive power has been trapped behind the weight of the cannonball. Not a bad thing when shooting, but terrible when loading. And the long scrubbing process needed to ensure the cannon does not misfire. Not anymore. The mechanist artifice of a created device powered through a mixture of steam and magic that automatically replaces the cannonball with only a fraction of the effort required on the part of the artillery team. Even though the cannon will still need to be scrubbed of any stray sparks, it will be much easier to do so when one does not need to spend their stamina on loading a large ball of iron as well. Hell yeah, that's dope. One thing's for sure, um, this uh, artificery, uh, all of the uh, stuff in here is really well written. Arty combat ability plus 15%, that's fucking incredible. The fact that it's 20, expected, expected honestly. Yeah, whoever wrote the artificer stuff, they knew their shit. Apparently... Proud of the people who wrote the goblin stuff. Not so much. <laughs> Please give me the next event. I, I, w I wish to be out of the serpent's rot problem, please. Oh! <gasps> Yo! The Serpent's Rot has been totally eradicated from our country. Our people can live without fear once more. Across our nation, the people are jubilant. Music fills the streets. And the nobility and commoners alike rejoice. Tomorrow we will mourn. Let's fucking go. The Rot is gone and... Well, we just need to get rid of the devastation. Do you still have Rot? I don't think so. Oh yeah, you do. Oh, you've got Serpent's Cure. So do I. Let's go. Pretty sure it's the same person who wrote Nimscott. I still need to do a Nimscott run. Now we just need to pay off loans, get corruption down. Become a functioning country once again. All of that stuff. Oh, it feels good to get out of the Serpent's Rot. Yo, I got 0.42 ducats, let's go. We gaming, we gaming. Let's just assume that Rajnahaga has some money, and we're going to go and take it. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, you're allied with Rajnahaga. Oh, you I'm declaring war. No, fucking asshole. You're not going to give me this land, are you? Because you're an absolute pile of piss. Son of a bitch. My siege. Serious. Oh, thank fuck. 
I would have been very annoyed if he was actually here. I only need six artillery. So... You got one siege, I don't think you need it. There we go. Because <laughs> so you've got three siege. I mean, I, I do have both of these on I want this land, but he's not going to give me it. Just the sheer ass hatchery of the game to give you two disasters back to back with something to see though. Uh, three? Excuse me? Three? Three back to back. Because Obsidian Invasion counts. It doesn't matter that I cheesed it with Giga fucking Giga Bavari helping me. It literally does not matter. It was still three. <laughs> If I go kill you as well, you might give me more stuff, because more participation, you see. See, I stack wiped a motherfucker. That's called participation, you see. Come on, just like separate piece him and give me his land. Like, it's not difficult. Don't be an ass. Kepikazol is right there. Yeah, actually, all of this area... This can all be, like, converted, because I'm going to keep the Shandibads. I should probably accept the Shandibads. Oh god, there's, there's more more humans. Sobagens, sure. Probably going to do the same with the Gankadens as well. But that means I should be able to convert you a bit easier? Yeah, okay. Let's just shove you on... Missionary strength as well, make it even faster. Losing money because I'm reinforcing that army, I think. Alright, we're going to go to war with uh, Verkal Gulen. It's kind of important, I think. Plus, they're still reeling from Serpent's Rot. I don't think they um, managed it quite as well as I did. Well, I wouldn't say I managed it well either, to be honest. But they're in a, a state right now. <gasps> Yo! I got one of them. Got one of the provinces that I wanted. Fuck it, we'll take it. We take it. Gotrek is not the one with the siege, so we go with you, and you can have Gotrek. And yeah, just fuck these guys. Straight up march on the capital. No, 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 stay where you are, stay where you are. Fuck. Get back on the capital.
This is like the scariest fucking Bavari I have ever witnessed. Deep, deep within the temple complex of Sharaja, where excavation teams have been searching for relics and valuables to extract, we found something. At the very heart of the temple complex, there lies a massive chamber. Or ornate designs decorate the walls and ancient reliefs depict the great spirits of the past. However, when they first in entered the room, it was not the walls that drew our people's attention, but the core. The immense orb gently hovers in the middle of the room and slowly pulses with energy, almost as if it was a beating heart. Upon closer inspection, it appears that the core is made of dames tier and is most likely the source of power for the complex's defences. It's undoubtedly important for the temple complex and its functions, but our artificers and mages are both clamouring for access to the artifact. Furthermore, the core presents a practical treasure trove of dames tier and could fetch us a high price if mined. So to give it to the artificers, they get loyalty, increases our state artifice capacity by two, temple complex gets removed, the mages, they get, yeah, nah. Five grand would be very nice. I'm gonna take the five grand. The last time I, when I was playing as um, Azkare, this event didn't actually give you any money. But it does now, and we can use it to pay off loans. I am in 15 grand of debt, after all. Let's go. Yeah, you can't even get through that fort. It's great. A loan offer from Kogzala. I accept. I don't know who you are. Wool is disappearing. Stop embezzling, you bastards. We already went through the horde curse. So wooed. No! Don't do that either. Bitches. So at the end of this, what I want is this province. 37. If I don't get the fort, eh, it is what it is. Oh, but I could also get him to release Segdir. If I get him to release Segdir, and, and uh, I'll try and vassalize Segdir as well. That could work out real nice. Oh, shit, that was the... Shouldn't have done that one. Lovely. If I can get some uh, money from Virtual Ghoulin as well, that would be nice. University of Hullas Crackers all. Let's go stability. I don't care what that event text said. So yeah, this is ideally like the bare minimum of the peace deal. I could even take Virkal Ghoul in itself. That wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. There is a fort there, so I'm not too worried. Wipe you out. Oh, nice. Bai Hunjing are taking care of my rebels for me. Butte. Legends. 
I have so much animosity to I by Hunjing as my time as Asgore, but like it doesn't matter. They they pulled through this time. Go on, take it, take it, take it, take it. Let's go. Right, let's take the Diplo points. The kids from the center for kids who can't read good are happy with your leadership. Hell yeah. That's a reference I understand. I was also a big Arumba fan. Then I was an Arumba friend. Company the Grudge Bears, we could totally get them to join. Hell yeah. Take those two techs. Uh, new idea group, I think we'll probably, I don't know, trade maybe? I don't know. Influence perhaps? I am gonna get, yeah, I'm gonna take influence because I am gonna get a, um, a vassal soon enough. You love the dwarf campaigns you guys did. It was the first time you saw Einbanar. Nice. Yeah, those are fun. Uh, let's grab... I don't think I get any absolutism, do I? Yeah, minus three. It's not a whole lot. I'll grab it anyway, in case I do want to get some absolutism. Imagine being so unbelievably fucked that you have to, like, build whatever guerrilla troops you can, and the, the thing that you decide to make are cannons. Makes no sense. Wait, are you not in my war? I thought you were in my war. Didn't I invite you to my war? Also, Crack the Hoomvroar are in here. Huh. Oh boy, oh boy. We've got uh, the Phoenix coming in here as well. You wanna you probably already give me, you don't give me military access? Give me some mill access. Like you're literally allied with me. Oh, Bavari don't give me mill access. What the fuck? You're, you're literally my ally as well, buddy. I just want to add them to the... to me, to me list of things. Ooh. I'll tell you what's fun. We just got a donation from Father Loris. Let me just pause this a second.
Where did I even fucking save it? <laughs> I just save it in here. Maybe I need to open original first. Alright, now save it. Yeah, that'll work. So now... There we go. Bit of dwarfiness. Let's go. I like it. Although I still feel like I want to put it like on the bottom. But that that that's a big improvement. I like that. Thank you so much, man. Hey. I feel like I'm a bit no. You you were your oh, fuck. Go. Ah, it's so annoying. Right. Fucking let me fix this first. So I want to be... Do I want to be a bit lower, a bit higher? I want to be like... There. Am I going over at all? There. I think we're good. I think we're good. Now we can move it all together to here. Hell yeah. And also a bit smaller, because what the fuck. Like that. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Father Loris. Appreciate that. Oh, yes, a wonderful problem. It's it's because everything snaps to things, and like usually that's a good thing, so I don't want to fuck with it. But then sometimes it's just annoying. Oh wait, fucking, you're already here? That sucks balls. Please don't take As- I don't think they can take Azkasaur. Holy shit, cat, stop scratching the door! Stop it. You are not hungry. You're just annoying. My cat's a bastard. I mean, all cats are bastards, really, aren't they? Let's be honest. Just a bit higher, don't cut off the bottom of the frame. Like that? There we go. True, but that's why they're great. I don't know. I don't know. I mean... Cats are cats. Nothing much changes, they're all the fucking same. Um, I I don't feel as attached to this cat as, as most would, because it's, it's my wife's cat, it's not really my cat. Um, she had him before she had me, so I, I'm I'm the the newcomer in this relationship, not not the cat. Captain Mill Blair. <laughs> Step cat, exactly. Uh, I'm not not. Do an increase in tolerance of humans, though. Number of hostile publications begin to circulate in the cities of Hull as Krakazul. Anonymous yet very critical authors claim that a government is autocratic and demand both a written constitution and a parliament. Fuck off. You do not get a parliament. Parliament sucks in this game. Fuck. Yo, I'll lose that stability. It's all good. It's all chill. Hey, stability, let's go. The amount of times I've translated the exact same passage is not zero. 
Uh, as our hold progresses ever deeper into the earth, it has come to our attention that, like in the days of old dwarf, one was uh, specialized to witness its true potential. Um, so I'm not going to read it again because it's literally the third time this has come up. Army tradition or professionalism? Uh, professionalism, I think, is better, right? I mean, I have none. I actually don't think that's better. I think Foundry's probably better. Ofdal Azan is... This one, right? Yeah. Iron... Tradition is harder to get. Yeah, it's true. He says at, <laughs> at 100%. Uh, but yeah, let's go with that then. And also, let's just... While we're here and we've got 99... Holy fuck, you're, you suck. So hard. Mm, I'll keep, we'll keep, we'll keep you. There, Magoon Forge Bar. The legend himself. Passive professionalism is good for manpower and a pinch. Yeah, it's it's the same thing with um, uh, in idea variation. There is leadership ideas which give passive um, growth to professionalism. It's just not good. Did I lose some troops somewhere? Or my fucking units? Oh, there they are. So, Crack Doom, do you want to fuck off? Nice. I'm now kind of worried about this. Are you a vassal? You're not. Like, what exactly is the Phoenix Empire doing here? The conquest of Urglernermanu. Urglagnu, not even better. Gulagnu. Right, so what's your war score? 21. I mean, they're not gonna do any, they're not gonna be able to take anything, right? Do we, do we hold out here? Um, for Call for Pizza and Maybe try and have the Phoenix piece out first. Phoenix Empire versus Bavari is going to be something to witness. How much loans we got? Seven grand left. Like, you've got nothing more to siege. You're waiting for me to peace out, but I want to release Segdir. I mean, obvi obviously, I want that. The Wait, there's not enough dev in your capital? It's 73 dev. Apparently, that's not enough. It won't be something to witness. You'll have to fight the best waifu. I mean, she is... Amazing. I just... Ah. Uh. Decadence comes with age, has hurt her a little bit. We should also start improving relations with this guy again. Just have you topped off, because we're going to be trying to vassalize you pretty quickly. Temple Heart discovered. Let's go. Give me that fucking duckage. 
Only three grand of loads. It's almost over. It's almost over. The debt is almost over. Come on, motherfucker. He oh, he peaced. He fucking peaced. I didn't even see it. You're the siege man, yeah, yeah. Actually, do I have a better siege leader? Four siege, let's go. Well, this is already probably damaged. Yeah, it is. Yo, he's getting ready. Repay another loan, fantastic. Man's marching. Uh, hopefully, Blade March. Uh, sorry, Bianfang doesn't go into Blade March. Or oh, fucking Jade March, even. Alright, that's it. Uh, so now, what I want you to do is release Sigdir. Oh, and I can still get their capital. Oh, bitch. Yes. 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 See now it's everything. Oh, there we go. Vassalize you baby. Um All of you need to go like home or something. Your home can be literally anywhere. But that is fantastic news. Offer alliance immediately to you. Uh, for you, I'm going to just fabricate random caverns now. Heroes Veil. Actually, don't probably want Heroes Veil. That was maybe an accident. Uh, but yeah, get rid of you now. Get rid of you. Proclaim guarantee on you. Uh, 82... Oh, fuck me. We're a year away from needing to die again. Let's try and fucking kill a yeti again, I guess. Sekdia's religion is New Sun Cult. Fuck it, why not? Black Dames tier bullets, let's go. For centuries, mages have had a near unstoppable force on the battlefield, able to kill thousands of soldiers with a single spell and deflecting most non magical attacks with simplest of shielding spells. Now, Black Dames tier promises to change everything. By infusing the bullets in the anti magic mineral, they could pierce through the defensive. Uh, but defenses of a mage uh, may try and create. No more shall mages stand unstoppable in warfare. No more shall the common person be subject to the whims of magic. Down with the mages. Down with the old order. Long live the people and long live the might of Black Dames Tear. Uh, so obviously research more artificery. And the Black Dames Tear gives discipline and yearly revolutionary zeal. For 30 out I feel like a lot of these have gone way higher than they were before. I feel like this is a lie. 20 cent chance that I die. Son of a bitch. It should not come with a stability hit, really, this, this searching for death thing. So how do I get you up higher? Transfer trade power is 25 or 10, one of the two. 20 percent chance. I did not die.
I'm gonna lose three fucking stability here, aren't I? There's another ten. We can just give them a gift to make them a vassal now. Fuck, they've rivaled my rival. They've rivaled my ally. You son of a bastard. You actual bastard. Ugh, fuck off. Why do you lose stability for trying to die? That is such a fucking stupid thing to add in. You're, the whole point of going on the Slayer quest is so that you can fucking kill your ruler so you don't lose stability. However, fuck you. Take the p pain anyway. Like, it's so dumb. That is so unbelievably dumb. Why would I ever bother going on one of those fucking quests? Fuck off. Actual fuck off. Useless. Please die. 80% chance I die. 25% chance I die. <sighs> nope, I survived it. So I just spent all of that money for nothing. That is so dumb. That is so fucking dumb. Like, I'm so, that's so dumb. But hey, we're out of debt. Like, the, the fact that you have to spend money, like, literally over a thousand, and you still might lose, and you still, it's not guaranteed to die from it, is wild. And then the Slayer thing, like, if it was just, yeah, you keep trying until you die, whatever. Kind of sucks, but whatever. But the fact that you basically are forced to lose thousands of stability every single ruler, every how, how long, every 20 years, fuck man, that's, that blows hard. That is a dreadful mechanic. Well, actually, I should have gone with you. The chance of death should absolutely go up with every single... Um, every single attempt. It should be guaranteed at the end. 100% guaranteed to be dead at the end.
It's it's legitimately fucking so stupid that it isn't. Fucking hell. So I just lose all of my stability for no reason. Like, I'm sorry, what the fuck? Like, who came up with that mechanic? Imagine that in MP. Well, we had a Hullers Crackers all in the last game. But, yeah, I don't know. They, they never complained about it, but... I wouldn't fucking blame them if they did. 36 is now the combat width. It's just, it's just so much admin that you lose for no reason. I mean, uh, dwarves in general, I think, are just dreadful for multiplayer. Like, I'd never want to, go, I, want, I never want to play dwarves in multiplayer. It's, it's nasty. Like, why would you ever want to do that? Mission time, that's right. Let's have a look at what we got. So, that needs to be uh, full cores. Look, if this is, if this is just going to keep giving me Fucking... Oh, that's what, 20 grand this has given me now? That's also a little broken. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm not gonna complain, but I'm not gonna lie. That's a bit broken. What does Serpent Bloom give me again? Manpower. Okay, so Serpent Bloom... Probably. Look. Serpent Bloom, if this was multiplayer, should totally get a soldier's household and not a manufactory. But this is not multiplayer. So I don't give a flying fuck because the AI is just not good enough to compete. I don't need to play optimally. Fucking hell, is this like a, a counter-attack? I think it is. Well, counter-attack this motherfucker. Holy war with, with, with the allies. Suck on Deej, Nutch. There we go. Would I consider giving the surface dwarf silver forge iron hammer ammo? Um, that I could do, right? Main reason I think that dwarves are basically like, sure, you can you can totally game the fuck out of it, right? And have, um, you know, all of the dwarves working together. So serpents blue, uh, serpents rot, and horde curse, and all that aren't that impactful, right? You can survive it if you work together, kind of thing. Um, because, you know, you all gotta go through it, so we might as well help each other when it comes up. Um, but I, I don't know, that just, to me, feels, like, really gamey, and I don't like doing that. Um, but 
but the alternative is just some of the most intentionally painful gameplay in Anbana. Like, it's obviously there as a check on power, right? Because they're kind of too powerful to let just blob for no cost. But it's also just not fun. And during these handbrakes, like, the handbrakes aren't fun. So, yeah, I mean, obviously Silver Forge doesn't get all of those, like, Horde Curse and Serpent's Rot. Um, the Hammer Dwarves don't get it. So, I mean, it's not it's not a case of I'll never play a Dwarf. Like, I would consider playing both of those. Um, there's other things that I think might be my time better spent, or, or rather uh, more interesting countries to play in multiplayer. Like, handbrakes are, are fine. Like, no, handbrakes are not fine. Brakes are fine. Handbrakes are not fine. Handbrakes are too sudden and too extensive. Like, if you're in a multiplayer situation and you've got an enemy, um, it's a complete roll of dice that, you know, oh, I got Horde Curse at the wrong time. So I'm getting fucked over by the other dwarf who didn't get it at this time. And now I can't fight back. And now and now he's got a horror curse, but, you know, he's got a fucking ally who he's cheesing with. So that's not going to hurt him that much. Like, it's just a... It's just... Uh... Phoenix Empire and Eorden have the best disasters. Phoenix Empire disasters, um, the one with... What's his face? Um, Amusu. Fucking incredible. Whoever made this Amusu's disaster... They did it right. That was absolutely phenomenal and so much fun to play through. All clan has the best disaster. Oh wait. Yeah, I feel bad for, for my dwarf fans. Average dwarf not dwarf. Average, average goblin enjoyer is on suicide watch. I want these tunnels more than anything else. That's already 77. Then we'll cut off your access. Yeah, we won't entirely cut off your access. You got one little bit of access. You know what? I think a fort there, of course, some other stuff is probably a better idea. How am I gonna overturn that? Like your eco, but you you're definitely talking a whole amount of shite when you're talking about your eco base being higher than mine. Let's be fucking real here. Your eco base isn't even close to mine. You with your silly little 48 dev versus my 1600. Your eco base is fucking nothing compared to mine. The 
If I already hold the land I have a claim on. Oh, they took uh, Hero's Veil. Vale. I'm fine with that. I don't care. Oh, also, we should totally continue spreading ancestor worship over here. Less hero worship and more like me worship. Just worship me. Ooh. Greedy grin. Conquest. Grudge bearers have conquest and reconquest on you. Let's fucking go. This is super dumb. There should not. I should be going faster through the rails. That's kind of the fucking point of the rails. Although I guess I need to uh, update the rails. The Grudge Settlers, hell yeah, that's a cool name. What am I spending so much money on? Oh, you bag of dick. How bad is it? It's partially ruined. It's going to be full ruined now. Dick. Yep. Fuck. Ass. Ass balls. I literally had a fort being built there for this exact reason. And what am I struggling on now? I need 100 admin, and these cores need to have autonomy lowered. Why is your autonomy so fucking high? Large minorities of dwarves and Harimari. Do I just get rid of my alliance with Segdir? I feel like at this point I'm more likely to conquer them. Also, I have an expedition to do. Wait, I'm over my force limit? What? My force limit just like get tanked or something. <laughs> that might be why. Oh boy, that's a lot of autonomy literally everywhere. Why is it so high? Serpent's Rock gives autonomy. Gotcha. So my income should just shoot up now, right? force limit surely did. It went up by over 40. Free absolutism. I was already on max absolutism, which is not a whole lot of absolutism. 
free government reform, though. Let's go. Legitimation of power. Colony diet no longer increases influence. Liberty subjects desire. Harsh treatment cost. Ooh. Max absolutism. Stab hit to declare war, minus one. Do I gain... Does that mean I gain fucking stability when I go to war? Hell yeah. I actually think that's the case. So we will try this. I don't know why I'm doing it. Danger level is basically none. Let's make loot 300. <laughs> I spent so much on the morale. Uh, Alright, fucking that's good enough then. Go. Hello Dovar, 44 day siege. Okie dokie. Yo, Phoenix Empire, I mean, if you wanna... No, no, that, that's cool, that's cool. That's alright, sweetie heart, baby, darling. <sighs> I wonder, are they just like trapped here? Oh my god, it is. No, it isn't. Never mind. Rude. Rude, dude. Just another example of UI lies. UI quite literally said it would be. Son of a... Wait, I'm at war with Segdir as well? Right, I'm at war with Segdir because of Azkasaur. You never know, they might try and give me it. I don't know. I don't know how they will. But we'll try. You know, these caverns are getting awfully fucking crowded right now. It's fine. It's almost over.
Wait, who is this? Harklum? Why'd you ally with goblins, you fucking traitor? N not traitor to me, but like just a traitor in general. I think that's it. That'll be enough to get us everywhere. So I guess I'll start passing this over to my vassal. Son of a bitch. You go deal with that. Oh, that's a rebel. I got returned to Asgasaur. Rude. Not a fan. Alright, so from you. I mean, I just get whatever I can, you know? All goes to my vassal anyway. I wonder if you're going to move your capital here and change from Company of the Gudge Bearers to Hehodavar. That could be cool to see. You know, or, or you could just purge them. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that... Good job you started coring this before you just fucking yeeted them out of there. You know, whatever. Not gonna question it. It's fucking fine. Love to see you play a hammer home game with this exact same attitude about green skins. That would be glorious to witness. What what did the hammer home do about green skins? What is their whole deal? Oh fucking Slayer quest! I need to die by seven o two. Do I go on another Slayer quest because I'm just gonna fucking die again, or I'm just not gonna die? That's oh you know what it is. I think that's exactly what it is. So E four has a big problem with deterministic events um, where things say it's like, oh, X percent chance to f do this but it doesn't do this it doesn't actually have a, an actual deterministic, or it has a deterministic outcome instead of a random outcome. I think that's what's going on here I think that it is saying there's a 20% chance when in fact, in actuality it's a 0% chance. Also, one flagon to rule them all. Uh, one flagon to show them, one flagon to hold it all, and through its neck to quench them. The flagons are the high keg lords of one big or small medium oversized problem. The volume vastly varies from ruler to ruler. We must remedy this at once and create the greatest, grandest, and most imposing flagon of all. 
1,000 crowns, 800 splendor. Tier 1 ales will be cheaper to produce. Thank fuck for that. So you need a mage tower and a courthouse in Earthseed, which is here. It also needs to get to 15 dev. So I can do that. Personal mage shields. Some powerful mages have reached for immortality, often going mad in the process. More clever ones settle for functional immortality, surrounding themselves in nine penetrable mage shields. Now that we've figured out how to uh, stably project such fields via artificery, abjuration spells imbued into clockwork spell gauges allow shield size and strength to be adjusted on the whim. Go to the days of gaps in one's armor, or even wearing armor at all. Let's go. That's not the button. So the mage shields, another thing that we can't use yet, but would give me fire damage received minus 20%. The dwarf tree has more human than any of the goblin trees. <laughs> well, you do know that it's fucking joke at times. So we're now not friends with you, and I can just declare war on you next time. Oh, fucking crack again. Hulu's crack is all. Sorry, not Hulu's crack is all. Fucking Rajnhaga. How many times do I have to teach you, old man? Oh, another blessing for my faith. Let's go. Uh, let's go national unrest. Amaldir is owned by the Crack Doom for Orions. Gronstad's me. Ernatvir is still not us. Hehodavar is the why we just got this thing. Arg Ordston. Soon to be owned by the Phoenix Empire. Where's Arg Ords? It's right there. Iron Hammer, Hammer Home, Bulgaric Tree is massive and really fun. Also, the best parts uh, is no hard curse. <laughs> I mean, it is it is pretty shit. Yo, motherfucker, out of my way! Allow me to murder face. Kanzad needs Cavernous Hall, Counting House, two manufactories, so we can start doing that as well. I suppose Soldier's Household, right? Did it say it needed a state house? It does need a state house. Like, with it, hmm. It's. The problem I have with the dwarves is very evident here, right? When we were this big, we had an income of about 80 ducats. Now that we are this big, plus over here, plus over here, we're no bigger than we used to be. Let's go! He gave me the final province. Oh, we can get another blessing as well.
Like, yeah, the handbrakes are just a little bit too handbrakey. Like, I, I just feel like I make no progress. Problem with dwarves is the intrinsic problem with the U4, which is the development mechanic. Yeah, no, I hate mechanic. I hate development. Development is the worst, absolute dog shit mechanic. Big, big hatred of that mechanic for sure. I have more than double in size. My military hasn't actually grown, and is still not making any more money than I was before. I mean, we did spend the last half century having issues with, like, disaster after disaster. Oh, we're at 165 now? Motherfucker. I'm gonna stretch to its limit with the creative takes on an incredible innovation, but that's about as far as you can take. Yeah, I want I want some kind of population system. And the fucking hilarious thing is as much as I rag on the game, I do think a lot of Victoria 3 things would work so well in Ambanar. Like, for example, this this province here used to have... What did it used to have? It used to have a different fucking resource, but now it has precursor relics. Yo, wouldn't it be fucking dope if it had both? If I could click on this province and look at, you know, get an extra tab of this is what is built in this province. Uh, like, the building system. You could even, like, drop the whole construction sector and just have it still be, like, a money thing. And have it so that, you know, you can build... I wouldn't say infinite numbers of each building. Like, I don't want to, you know, a level 50 fucking... Uh, workshop, right? I don't want that. I don't want that. I just want level ones all over the place as well. Um, but like, just just have like you know, a tab here for these are the goods here, and you know, fucking this this place has grain, so build farms there. Or, but I could also build, you know, a workshop which would work with the glass that is being made here, or something along those lines. Like something like that, I'd really really enjoy. Like not. Every part of Victoria 3 is without any merit whatsoever. Majority of it, no merits. But some of it is actually good. So, not much. Some of it. And a population system as well. Um, I don't even need, like, different classes of people. Like, I don't need, like, a nobles and a peasants and a laborers and a machinist and all that shit. Right? Um, you'd, you'd be able to get by with, um, like, you'd obviously need to simulate, uh, not simulate, but you'd need to do what your races are, right? So, dwarf and, and whatever, that could be some classes. Um, but then, in that, in that breakdown of, you know, orcs, you'd have soldier pops, you'd have worker pops, and you'd have probably nobles, and then maybe peasants. Like, you could do you could do upper class, middle class, lower class, and soldiers, and that would probably do it. Imagine a deep and properly customizable pop mechanic similar to Stellaris in EU4, not the new and half baked system of Vicky 3. Uh, I don't know if I'd prefer Stellaris pops. Imagine all the dwarven migrant pops flooding back to retake their hold, so much better than the dev mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. Like a stripped down Vicky 2 version would be best, I think. Or honestly, Imperator. Like, that has. Um, 
migration. It could work. Why can't you get any more buildings? Lower autonomy than 60 in Dakliabat Pulibaps. It's going up! Motherfucker! Stop sponsoring monster, hun monster hunters! Oh, and I need to spend more on reducing corruption as well, apparently. Not that much. Like 20 ducats a month. So I can reduce... Oh, I'm, I'm still at war. Okay, and then I can reduce it and then it'll probably be done. Sponsor monster is the estate's edict. Yeah, but I can't get rid of it. If I declare war on you, obviously we have a truce, so I would only lose seven instead of the eight, because the royal marriage, don't worry about that part. But I do need to start, like, I'll send you a warning, you don't like that, do you? Yeah, you're a dick. Just means I can declare war on him while having a royal marriage, which is nice, actually. You want it to convert more land, that's a good idea. Still need to yeet more goblins out of here as well. Oh shit, we're at war with Bai Hunjing. Get fucked, Bai Hunjing. I need to not be at war so that I can annex the grudge bearers as well. Bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, ba -da -ba -bum. I need to start thinking about killing myself again soon, too. Good day. Got a new job. Hey, congrats, man. Quit, uh, the other, quit the other one that's killing you. Well, that's fucking dope. That is... That's a fucking solid day, that is. Congratulations. And good job on the new job. And now Lambert is playing Ebonar. Heck yeah. I think, you know, one of those things is not like the others. Um, but I'm glad... Yeah, I'm happy for you, buddy. That's dope. Ba -ba -da -bum -bum. Right, can we have peace, please? 
This, Bavaria is just absolutely going ham. There's the piece. Now, integration time? Yes. Why am I building workshops after really everywhere? Because they're the best building. Spamming them is not a bad idea. Same with manufactories. Whenever you see, right, whenever you see on Reddit or wherever you go to find your EU4 fix, and it's uh, somebody's put a tier list of, um, you know, what buildings are good, and they don't have S tier workshops and manufactories, this person is not to be trusted. Like, those are the buildings that should be in every single province. Uh, when it comes to um, uh, provinces that have uh, grain and wool, you can accept households instead of manufactories, because it, it is what it is. And the farm estate, specifically, is just not, it's not fantastic, right? So you can get away with, you know, households here instead of farm estates. But... Someone tells you, you know, that, you know, your manufactories aren't S tier, that your workshops aren't S tier, they're talking shit and you should ignore them. Any building tier list should have every single province gets a workshop, every single province gets a university, every single province gets a manufactory or a soldier's household, every single province gets training fields. And a conscription center. Um, temples. If you build any, you are wrong. They are bad. They are very bad and you should never build temples. To the point where you're better off going around when you've annexed places. Finding where has built the temples. Firstly, exploit the dev. Because look, I'm, I'm going to not do it this time, right? But 1377 with the temple... 1032, right? So you burn it, then you delete the temple. Which gives you a spare slot with which to build a barracks. It's it's all about utilizing the limited slots that you get. If you make more money, you can make more buildings and production makes you money. And the production makes trade, which makes you more money. Yeah, basically it's it's double dipping because production, which the um, like this increases your production efficiency, which gives you more production money, but also gives you more trade money. It's just yeah, you're basically double dipping on the value, and it's it it just it's just how it works. But yeah, temples trash. Delete delete your temples. Like it's not massively important for me to do it here because you know these aren't players. And, like, even Phoenix Empire, as fucking ridiculously scary as they are, can be beaten with, like, funky shit. Um, but holy fuck, that is, that is a fucking Phoenix. Holy god damn. Um, but, yeah, it's... It's just how the game is. Lower autonomy for mission. That's a fucking shout. Thank you. Why can't I? Because I need to wait until 06. Piss balls. That's annoying. Taking a short but needed break from the duties, the high keg lord recently went out for a quiet stroll in the nearby forest. There among the lush greener where the shadows danced from the setting sun, Magni caught a glimpse of something white out of the corner of their eye. To get a better look, they turned and found themselves eye to eye with an ethereal white tiger standing some distance away. After staying at each other for a while, the white tiger left and could no longer be found. 
Rumor spread quickly throughout the realm, and Magni's guards and attendants were able to give testimony and credibility to the story that our great High Keg Lord was visited by the elusive White Tiger. After all, the White Tiger is a spirit that is only seen by mortals and is said to only reveal itself to just and virtuous. Nice! I gain... Oh yeah, that's useful. Cool event that does nothing. How fun. We're not going to wipe them out because I don't want this land, but maybe someone else is going to wipe that part out. Son of a bitch! Why am I losing... I don't want to gain corruption. I just want to kill the hobgoblins. Is that too much to ask? Lovely stuff. Uh, I'm. I need to embrace this next fucking doodad. Enlightenment. All oh, right. I need to build myself some uh, universities, huh? You've already got one. You've already got one. Wait, it's not the enlightenment, it's... It's spawning next fucking year. If it doesn't spawn immediately, then hopefully my, uh... My universities can finish. And I... never mind. Well, I didn't get it. Ah, uh, you're expensive. Inflation reduction guy is going to be handy. Anyway, let's go murder Segdir. Kur and Uleg were at war with. Okay, interesting. Oh, you fucking pile of dick wanking piss. Come on, buddy. Fuck. Alright, looks like I'm waiting for Boov. That's a lot of Phoenix troops right here. Yo, buddy. Break your alliance with it. No, mm, fuck ass. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Intelligent AI for sure. It's fine though. We'll just win. That's the plan. There's still enough Jade Land to conquer. Yeah, there's, I'm, I'm going to go after them again, but I have uh, Truce at the moment. Although well, Truce ends very soon. Wait, did uh, Virgil Gulen get murdered? Yeah, they're full dead. Nice. 
gold and they didn't even fucking dip dev it? Morons. I need to upgrade forts. What, you're colonizing? Jesus Christ. Hey, at least you colonized uh, Hehodovar, and you made it your uh, capital as well, which is nice. I mean, you, you could have just kept it as it was, but you know, what, you, whatever you like, you know, really, honestly, it's, it's chill. Yeah, I, I feel like with um, proper tactics, we can probably beat the Phoenix Empire. need a lot of... Ooh, ancestral garden golems. That's what we need. The idea of a living statue, a golem, is not a new conception, with the earliest example of these being active in the days of ancient Old Dwarf. Our Brillites have dedicated the time and resources to their patronage towards replicating such wonders in the modern era. To this end, they've partially succeeded. The Brillites have descended... Uh, sorry, succeeded into creating a functional golem, usually sculpted to resemble a deceased ancestor. Many dwarves who see these statues quickly deem them ancestor golems, in the belief that the spirits of the ancestors they depict would offer guidance to the golem and use it to protect their descendants. The idea of fighting alongside a deceased ancestor is enough to drive many dwarves to fight to the death, and even if death does not come, it serves as a profound experience. Although they are too expensive to use as soldiers, these ancestor golems could feasibly line the walls of any religious centre. Imagine a goblin's shock when they attempt to defile a shrine, only to find the very objects they sought to destroy beheading them in a single swipe. Nice. Um, so I'm going to try and drink again. It's probably going to fail. Oh wait, I'm at war with Kurunuleg. I literally can't. Like, is Kurun Uleg, like, really small now? Nah, 216. So there's... They got land up here and stuff, but really... These really won hard. Gotta get that stability, because we're about to fucking lose it. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to kill my ruler. I just don't. I don't think it's possible. There he is. Kind of need that admin point. Yeah, I, I honestly, I don't think it's possible. I think it is just a bugged fucking... It's, it's chosen that I will never uh, die on these Slayer quests. Maybe we can try when we get a new Slayer quest. Macat, please quit your scratching. Thank you.
A hundred and four. Fuck it now. Yeah, I think uh, it's not going to happen. Alright, and we will try and get enough troops together that we can actually fight the Phoenix Empire. We'll take Bavari and... We'll take Bavari with us, um, and they'll be able to do something. Some of these are trash, some of them are good. It's like games just refusing to give me fire value for whatever reason. Sure, you can deal with my shit then, nice. Wait, I've got another expedition I can do. Alright, sure. Danger level Chronium. Yo, what? I don't know what danger Chronium and length Labyrinthine. Estimated loot unknown. This might be a fun one. You can have 20,000 men. Nope, you can have 10,000. Apparently that is the maximum. Um, we're going to need to supply you. No, I'm not giving you any extra shares. Cost me seven hundred so far. Fuck it. Let's let's go. Let's try it out. Hopefully this is a special one. Would be kind of cool, you know. Your party returns to the now powered up and hopefully functional main room of the structure. Much to your joy, it's indeed as you hoped. The entire hall is illuminated by a bright light emitted from a strange ornate lanterns who shine upon impressive looking decor that can now be seen without any additional sources of brightness. From surprisingly lavish furniture dotting the corners to astutely put together walkways leading to other rooms, you just now begin to notice how gifted the workforce in this workshop really was. Several previously locked doors are now open to you as your gaze lingers on two options, neatly displayed by a sign above two peculiar doorways. The forge, with the promise of uncovering technological marvels that may lie dominant in this complex, or the gem storage, which makes many in your groups ecstatic with its allure of endless riches. A tech or rich tech? Tech's, tech's cool. Tech's cool. Trade efficiency, half price guy. Let's go. Yeah. 
You decide to prioritize the forge in your exploration efforts since you're sure it holds plenty of ma interesting materials and potential constructions of invaluable worth to the outside world. And sure enough, once you enter the forge itself, you see several large smelting furnaces that are now powered up and ready to continue producing raw materials for the smithies ahead. However, it also seems that decades of abandonment have led to deterioration of a few key components. As one of the furnaces near the middle of the forge uh, is spewing out flames, with plenty of nearby equipment being ignited by it as well. For present supplies to extinguish the fire. Try your hardest to extinguish the flames with everything available to you, and after a few initial setbacks, eventually succeed in putting out the fires. Afterwards, you manage to secure quite a bit of raw materials that some of you estimate to be worth quite a bit on the markets all over Anbanar. After inspecting your equipment, you move ahead to what seems to be the entrance of a smithy. I think this is a special... Um, Mission tree specific dig for Verkal Gulen. As you put out the flames, you proceed onwards to the smithing area ahead. You see several arrays of smaller metallurgy workshops lined up perfectly with all kinds of tools used for turning raw materials into the intricate wonders of your art saw throughout the workshop. As you rummage through the first stations, your guards notice noises that quickly close on in your group. Bailing and managing to alert the rest of your men to the danger, they are soon struck down by a small but well equipped mob of goblins. Not again. There's no time to prepare. The goblin troops immediately attack your group, and you are forced to defend yourself against nimble attacks. Thankfully, you're used to that by now. Some men fall, some have to deal with minor injuries, but in the end, you dispatch this small contingent of enemies fairly quickly. It appears to have been a scout troop. This does not bode well. But I gained those 4% supplies back. After finishing off your business in the forge, you decide to head out and explore the rest of the complex. Your group eventually comes across, uh, comes to a halt at the crossroads with a few signs pointing towards different directions. After some arguing, everyone agrees that you decide where to head next. Uh, explore the barracks. If we're going to get attacked, might need a few more weapons, maybe. Wait, I'm colonizing? Okay. Where am I colonizing? Here. Choosing to follow the signs towards the barracks, you make your way through the labyrinth of passages until you reach a large cluster of smaller separated living and sleeping quarters titled Zulgub. Judging by its size, these barracks were used to house a bulk of the stationary forces back when the workshop or operated under normal conditions. Ideal for stocking up on all kinds of provisions, or so you think. Sadly, a large amount of goblins seem to have thought the same and made camp within the comfy rooms. The awkward moment of one group disrupting another group's well-earned rest is quickly forgotten about as everyone picks up the weapons and fighting commences. The tank corridors and overall narrow spaces in the living areas make any engagement rather difficult for both parties, and your expedition struggled quite a bit to get the upper hand over the well-rested bunch of goblins that have scattered all across the quarters, and yet you defeat the goblins with ease, only suffering a few minor casualties. Nonetheless, your strategist notices several handwritings left behind by the goblin warriors indicating that they are a fraction of a much larger force that may eventually make their way to the workshop. The real battles are yet to come, of course. Yeah, this is this is a very sp a special one. I feel like this was definitely made uniquely for this province, like the one that I have for uh, Stromalgiv. Speaking of, I I need to do more mission things. Oh, I also need to repair. Hold restoration. I, I basically need uh, to be at peace. Pretty sure I should have appeared after. I might need... Yeah. There we go, I just needed the one tick. I could have sworn I set myself to arrive the day after. I 
The fight against the goblins within the barracks was a surprise, but you managed to brave the attack somewhat successfully. However, as you make your way back to the central hub of the workshop, one of your scouts managed to detain a goblin guard at its post near the central workshop hub. As you arrive, an interrogation is in process, with the guards spilling the beans about a large fighting force stationed in the nearby caves and now alerted by your excursion. The local chief decided that your presence must be the sign of a massive discovery, and thus massed all of his fighting forces to come and take whatever you found. This does not bode well within your group. Many voices... Many voice their fears in regard to the oncoming assault. You decide to hurry to the main room as soon as possible and set up the fortifications, but as you arrive, it's already too late. The massive metal doors are already wide open, and seemingly endless horde of goblins is pouring through it. The situation could not be more dire. The goblin tide has begun. Ah, oh, fuck ass. This is nothing like you've ever faced before. The goblin manpower seems to be truly endless, as more and more keep flooding into the hall, posing a tough challenge to even the most battle-hardened veterans in your expedition. Not only is the amount of enemies staggering, their ferocity is unmatched as well. Not a single battle you fought during this expedition so far has demanded so much of you as you desperately attempt to hold choke points near the hall's exits. Just defending your positions is an arduous affair, as encirclement becomes a real issue for your troops. The fight continues, and your entire force gazes into the abyss of total annihilation. Thankfully, though, death is not what fate has in store for you today. In a stroke of either pure genius or sheer dumb luck, one of your archers managed to fell the commanding officer in charge of the entire mob with a well-aimed shot, causing enough confusion in the ranks of the goblins for your warriors to decapitate the other leading figures. Soon afterwards, the tide of battle turns in your favour, and soon a once mighty goblin tide is reduced to a large pile of corpses. You celebrate as you did not only survive against all odds, but manage to loot impressive jewellery and other valuables from the goblin officers. Nothing will hinder you anymore. No one died. Not a single bastard died. None. No deaths. Let's go. <laughs> oh, fun. I do, I do like these little events. These ones are fun. I'm glad these exist. Bavari just like fucking hanging out here. He's, he's just chilling. He's just chilling. It's been a long journey, but now it's finally time to reap the fruits of your labor. After the hardships of the last few days, there's no more obstacles left, no more enemies to fight, and no more hardships that could best you and your men. You make sure to explore the rest of the complex, to the extent it is powered up anyways, and stow away all of your findings for the way back. Take some time, but eventually you're sure you've done all you can for now. As your expedition gathers for the departure, you once again praise them for the job well done and promise to reward them generously upon a safe return. Then you finally head out. Uh, oh, it's done. Okay. That was 150... Well, yeah, 150 ducats is all I get for that. Cool. I think I spent 700. Pretty sure I spent 700. That was wank. <laughs> Fuck. What a waste. Oh, but I do get Le Forn Vemibrathar for 800, and I can get Goods Produce Modifier, Great Project. Oh, Global Upgrade Cost for Great Projects. That's actually dope. This is the main gain. That's dope. Hold restoration. I need to do this. I need 50 dip. And we're going to be restoring... Uh, Gronstenad. That was so expensive in dip. Holy shit. This time you can lower autonomy in the province. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 
It's gone up to 91! Shameful ruler. Shameful ruler is what is killing me! That's why I'm having so many issues. Because my fucking game's bugged and my guy won't die. This is why I'm being fucking shafted. Because that piss I'm getting every fucking 20 years for five years. So five years of monthly autonomy change, 0. 0.5, is what? Five times 12, or five times six, so it's fucking 30. I'm gaining 30 autonomy every 20 years. And I'm not able to cover that in the same amount of time. It's actually fucking garbage. Like, there's no way I can deal with that. That's so piss. So from now on, what I'm going to do is when I get up to, like, the month before this happens, we are doing that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm not accepting this anymore. That's the fact that it's broken. Like, the, why would you? I mean, you've, you've got to assume that the person who coded the Hollis Crackers old mission stuff wasn't aware at the time that the random chance events are broken and non-functional. Like, you, you can't. That, that, that just has to be it, right? They just didn't know. Because if they'd known, they wouldn't have done it. It's obvious. But holy shit, that's so fucking stupid. Like, I cannot fucking believe that. Oh, fella, can't you... No. F mm. You set all that as my one? Yeah, okay. I mean, I suppose it's fine. I, d I did want to go and attack him anyway, but, like, it's kind of annoying. I, I could have done it myself. Allying with Bavari basically made my campaign. They're, they're such a good ally.
But yeah, I'm pretty, pretty sure I'm just going to cheat from now on to get this um, guy die dead instead of like fucking around with the broken things. I mean, it's already been confirmed that this is what's happening when it comes to random events because if you recall, one of the things I had with my Phoenix Empire run because of Burst Our Tanches, is every so many years, it may have been 25 years, uh, something like that, you got an event called, um, or you need to do a decision called like the five year plans. Um, and it was confirmed that it is just straight up broken, right? They, um, you would always get the same outcome every time. And if you managed to, at the start of your game, roll the good outcome, fantastic. But like me, I, I didn't roll the good outcome, so it was just fucked. And it was, every single time, just a fail. So I, I, I don't feel bad about technically cheating because fucking it's broken. <laughs> it is a um, an issue specific to EU4, not Ambanar's fault really. But it is what it is. You play with the game that you've got, and uh, the game I've got allows me to use the console, so I will do so. Alright, how many do I get? Quite a lot, actually. Quite a lot! Holy fuck! Buvari is a fucking ally! Hell yeah! Damn, son! That is actually the most generous AI ally I've ever had. This is actually delightful. A pleasure to war with. Plunder Bugogma. Oh, speaking of, you need a man factory, my dude. That's a huge AI nation. It's a friend. This is a bigger AI nation. This is also a huge AI nation. This Phoenix Empire has unfortunately <laughs> taken caves. Huh. <laughs> so that's gonna be fun. We should probably go murder you. You need to be at 20. No. Castle more important.
All right. <clears throat> oh! Segdir no longer owns... They own this little smidge. But still allied to the faint. Fucking fabulous. Fabulous, in fact. How the fuck did you get this when they're allied to the Phoenix Empire? I'm sorry. What the fuck? No peace, you get murdered. Should I use my general or my leader? Because uh, why not? He might die. Command gives a shit, but no one cares. Now we're going to continue to prepare defenses so that we can fight the Phoenix Empire, which is gonna really be quite difficult and painful. You're guaranteed by the Phoenix Empire as well, so it's two wars against the Phoenix Empire that we need to do. Fun. Very fun. Dwarvar Dark comes from Hula's Crackers all, so we can do this whenever. Digger's Delight comes from here, so we can only do this when the uh, autonomy is low enough. Beard Turner comes from here. What, are the, what does the autonomy need to be at? Iron Belly comes from here. Okay, there we are. So, we are now aware that one of them isn't broken. The Iron Belly one isn't broken. Uh, not all of them, like some of them are still broken. But like, look at the amount of autonomy it gives to do this. That's fucking so ass. Give so much autonomy. Ah, <sighs> fucking hell. Why am I only making twenty five ducats now? What's costing me so fucking much? No idea, actually. I've actually got no idea. Missionaries costing me 15 won't be it. Corruption, we were paying this before. State maintenance, I don't think that's gone up very much. Fort maintenance is shitty, but I mean, whatever. This fort is no longer relevant. 
That one can actually go away now as well. We don't need all of these. Especially considering Bavari's a friend. Uh, let's get rid of this one. Let's get rid of that one. Those two are fine, actually. That one's fine. That one's fine. That one's fine. That's fine. That one's fine. That's fine. We're going to need to build another one like here. I don't actually have that many forts. I mean, the, the, my big problem, I think, is just fucking autonomy. So much autonomy everywhere. Because of the bugged event. But it is what it is. We'll work on it. Fucking, the fact that Anzabad is not a friend of the Phoenix Empire and still exists is kind of crazy. 400,000. I mean, Bavari's bigger, but I imagine their armies are probably better. Uh, let's restore Virkal Gulen. Oh, I forgot. It was probably expensive. Uh, Otis Krakagul gets insult against Bianfang. I don't really care, but I'll take the loyalty of my cartels. That should work out fine. Um, you, we are improved relations plus 91. Guamud is no longer really a valuable ally. Uh, I might try and get one Zia as an ally, but you're a rival of them. Mm. Oh, you rivaled me. Could rival. I don't care about Anzabad. Fucking whatever. Yeah. There's a gray zone in the middle of all the pink. Where? In, in my initial area. Yo! Yo, you sneaky little bastard! You sneaky little bastard! What the fuck? Thank you, the Storm Fury. Um... Going to watch from the beginning soon because I missed the start, but come here to tell you there's one more province to colonize in your initial area. It's the grey zone in the middle of all the pink. What the fuck? <laughs> you sneaky little fuck. How the... How I missed that. How the fuck I missed that. What the shit. Oh, and immediately, immediately. I feel like a clown. The fuck? Um, also, yeah, let's have a look at missions again. All right, so you... It's literally just this core. And it's still going... Oh, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down. It would be going up if I wasn't at peace. There's another adventure.
It's a danger level high. Okay. Oh, Larenkar's a thing, of course. There's quite a lot of loot here, potentially. Oh, I don't have any fucking, uh... Uh, I don't have any, uh, mana. So I can't organize the troops at all. That's probably fine. Hopefully that works out. Hey, Grunstad is restored. Which means, cut off the head. The first rule of slaying is always to cut off the head. This holds true for all beasts, and the hobgoblins of the command are no different. If we take Gronstad, they will panic and run, with their cavernous head taken away from them. Get a permanent claim on the Jade Mines region, of course. And they call it a mine. A mine! Ofdal Kanzad still needs workshop, counting house, state house. We built the state house. Workshop. What am I, what am I missing for this mission? Two mana factories, expanded infrastructure level of two. At least dig level three. We're dig level five. Two mana factories. Stay house is a mana factory. Weapons Manufactory is a Manufactory. As the workshop. Yes, 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 yes. Expanded infrastructure of two, yes. I've done that. Like that middle one of Dalkan. That is of Dalkanzad. It's got an... I mean, the fact that I can downgrade it is telling. Expanded infrastructure plus one? Maybe it does need more? I'll try and put it to level two and see if that helps. But it should be fine. I mean, I'll, I'll click the button as soon as it gets to 50 points. Yeah, now that's done. Okay, so now I need to be drunk and scornfully insult the command. So being drunk is like a grand, which is fucking wild. Like, it's just literally wild. Um, let's get some money from the cartels. Don't need the settler increase anymore, I don't think. Let's pay off those exp Actually, let's grab that. And I'll pay off the 3.5% loans. I'll pay off a couple of them. I'm about to take another 3.5% loan. Holy shit, I'm... It's, yeah, so much money. So much loans, so much debt. Whatever, take another one then. Um, and we are going to... Harris Volcomol. 
two, three, four, five. This one gives me drunk, I think. Yes. And now scornfully insult you. Parry this, you filthy fucking casual. As many a dwarf has found out during the bar fight that we went out of hand, alcohol is quite flammable. Some of our more enterprising engineers are keen on making uh, use of that fact as they've devised a new form of artillery ammunition, which is essentially just reinforced barrels of heavily distilled ale with delayed ignition. The initial tests were promising, they are quite eager to expand production and try it on a larger scale. Thunder kegs. Fire! With a loud thunder, the cannons fire in unison, their payloads soaring through the cave. Just before they hit the rock, they explode, igniting the heavily distilled ale inside. A wave of liquid fire blankets the cave floor, lighting up the cave walls all the way to the cannon positions. The lead engineer looks proudly at High Keg Lord Grimmon I, a wide grin splitting his singed beard. So what do you think? It's a thing of beauty. Artillery fire plus 0.1? Yeah, I'll take it. And three production in Kansas is pretty cool too. So now, was it a strong seed? I need a courthouse uh, in Earth Seed. Yo, isn't it fucking glorious that I never did this when I had the chance? Because now I need the mage's influence to be high. <laughs> uh, reduce research regulations and. That brings us to 26. Does casting a spell give influence to them? Fuck me, this is so expensive. Does that help at all? I feel like probably it didn't. Do that for another 5%. Sell titles gives them 1%. Battle Mage Academies gives them 5%. Oh, there are 40. There are 40. There are 40. There are 40. Not that one I want. I want Earthseed, Mage Tower, and then we're good. Not Mage Tower, sorry. Earthseed gets the courthouse and we're good. Please keep your uh, thing going. Stay at 40. What's your equilibrium? Apparently, it's just as it is. Uh, Grua Bronzebeard, the local inventor for Gora Zumbrog, has patented a new design for the wheeled shuttle that he promises to revolutionize weaving by eliminating the need for a second person to catch the shuttle as it passes through the warp threads. While productivity is still limited by the rate at which thread can be spun, already a major bottleneck in textile production, the shuttle is quickly spreading to weavers all over the country. Fantastic. Still got mad loans though. There's the mission. Earthseed is a tremendously holy place, it being where Halana created the first dwarves. And while us dwarves have dissipated since then, spreading out through the mountains and beyond, the divine power that created us has not. It seeped back deep into the rock, imbuing the ore there with strange properties. Our mages tell us this ore, with some magical encouragement, can manifest powerful transmutation magic, turning it into gold. Gold will be produced in Earthseed. Yeah, alright, cool. Uh, inflation at zero, okay. Yeah, I think I'll, uh, I'll have to wait on that one. It's coming, eventually. Uh, 
All right. Well, with that, I am going to end the stream here. Um, I think we did all right. We survived Serpent's Rot. Um, <laughs> barely. Uh, and now, I guess, in our next stream, which, uh, what is it? It might be tomorrow. I'm not sure just yet. Uh, keep an eye out. If you're interested in watching more of this, sub on YouTube, bell button, all that good shit. Um, and in the next uh, stream, we're going to go to war with the Phoenix Empire. Which is real fucking scary. Just straight up. <laughs> Just straight up. Uh, but yeah, this should be a good time. So I hope to see you all tomorrow. Thank you all very much for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.